Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled Parents. In today's episode, Entitled House Cleaner brings her children, children trash my home. Vent, my entitled mother went to extremes to ruin my childhood over one mistake. My mother's toxic behavior is unbearable after my father's death. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Entitled house cleaner brings her children, children trash my home. Gotta put this out here. Most absurd EP situation I've personally encountered. My husband and I looked to hire a local husband and wife small business to clean and do maintenance projects on our house before our baby comes in a few weeks. They came by tonight to take a look at the projects and surprise. Brought their three elementary-aged children. No biggie, I thought, not ideal, but I like children and like the idea of our home being a welcoming place for them. We'll let it go. We op opened the door and the children scattered, all three took off screaming in a different direction with their shoes on. One ended up in my bedroom and two on different ends of the living room where they all three started pulling my daughter's carefully organized, orderly toys off the shelves at an extremely rapid pace. Well, they sure made themselves at home, the mom beamed. They sure love your house. I tried to orient the parents quickly so they would leave ASAP, and the oldest child noticed our loft, which is our playroom slash library and is also carefully organized and decorated with love with various handcrafted elements, and they all raced upstairs. We have four kids of our own but managed to mostly keep things orderly. Each toy has a place, we have some small and breakable pieces from my and my husband's childhood, all the books are shelved alphabetically in categories. All three children started shrieking at the sight of the room. I was trying to wrap up discussion with the mom. Then the stomping started and the clanging. Sounded like jumping off furniture. I paused for the mom to say something but she didn't even bat an eyelash. Then came a crash that could only have been furniture falling over, mom again didn't so much as comment. My husband ran upstairs, alarmed. The youngest one, for maybe, then raced down needing to go potty urgently. Three of our four bathrooms need service, which is why we were hiring these people, so the only bathroom available was our master bath. Where we have chicks in an incubator. As I showed the child where to go, she got distracted by the chicks and screamed to the older kids upstairs to come and see, come and see, come and see now. So the older two came barreling and yelling, shoes on, through my bedroom and bathroom, and the small one didn't quite make it to the toilet in the excitement. This all happened in the like 15 minutes I thought we'd be quickly introducing the adult contractors to the projects and negotiating pay. This was bizarre and horrible, I thought but we'll just have them do the job tomorrow and not work with them again. But then. Two of the kids started to tantrum when it was time for them to leave, notably without putting away a single toy they had disassembled and strewn about. Mom says, it's okay. We'll be back so you can play more with them tomorrow. WTF. She was expecting to bring the children and leave them unsupervised in my home, or maybe she expected me to provide childcare while she performed tasks clearly unsafe for children in closed off rooms for seven hours. Of course we are cancelling. I'm almost too shocked to even be upset. I just checked upstairs and found a shelf of books partially toppled. Every toy in the living room is in pieces on the floor. P is not in the toilet. It happens so fast, I just can't. I just, what? And if you found them on Angie's list and leave a review, I'm sure you'd say you didn't hire them. So then the review isn't made public and just sent as feedback to the vendor. Yes, don't let them get some poor unwitting person get struck by the same disaster as you. Also they should not be doing this kind of work. Yikes. Glad you are cancelling. Hope you tell them exactly why you are cancelling. None of that experience was normal for a business transaction. She meant to explain the exact reason. If they're legitimately trying to start a business, they need to know where to improve. Something tells me they aren't legit though. 
Also please survey your home and make sure nothing was stolen in all the cacophony. I hate to stress you more, but this whole thing is so bizarre, anything is possible. OP needs to send them an invoice for cleaning and damages. Make sure to take pictures. Yes, we cancelled because it would be impossible for you to clean and repair our home faster than your kids can destroy it. Cancel ASAP. What wretched behavior, that deserves a negative review. I wonder if you can bill them for the time spent to actually clean up the house. Vent, my entitled mother went to extremes to ruin my childhood over one mistake. Hey fellow Redditors. I've been lurking on this subreddit for a while, and I never thought I'd have a story to share here. But here I am, needing to get this off my chest. Brace yourselves, because this is a wild ride involving my entitled mother who took things to a whole new level just because of one mistake I made as a child. Back background, I'm now in my 20s, reflecting on a childhood that was tainted by my mother's entitled behavior. Back when I was around 10 years old, I made a mistake that kids sometimes do, I accidentally broke a vase in our living room while playing ball indoors. It was an honest mistake, but my mother's reaction was anything but reasonable. Instead of treating it as a learning opportunity or a chance to teach me about accidents, my mother unleashed a torrent of entitlement that would haunt me for years. She started berating me, calling me names, and then she did the unimaginable, she grounded me for a whopping six months. Yes, you read that right, half a year for a broken vase. But wait, it gets worse. She didn't stop at just grounding me. She went on a rampage to ensure that my life was miserable during those six months. She barred me from seeing my friends, attending any extracurricular activities, and worst of all, she confiscated anything remotely enjoyable, my books, games, and even my art supplies. It felt like a prison sentence for a mistake that any kid could have made. She would hold this mistake over my head for years to come, using it to guilt trip me and control my actions. She'd bring it up in front of family and friends, painting me as some sort of delinquent, all over a simple accident. The psychological toll this took on me was immense, and I still find myself grappling with self-esteem issues because of her behavior. Looking back, it's clear that my mother's entitlement and extreme measures weren't about teaching me a lesson or correcting my behavior. It was about her need for control and dominance, even at the expense of her own child's well-being. I'm sharing this story now to remind everyone that sometimes, entitled parents can take things to an extreme that has lasting effects on their children. If you're dealing with a similar situation, remember that you're not alone. Don't let their entitlement define you or your worth. And to all the parents out there, please, let's strive to teach our kids through understanding, compassion, and healthy discipline rather than resorting to extreme measures that only breed resentment. I kind of feel you need to go back to her house now and drop a vase right in front of her. Honestly, after reading this, I would wait until the next time your mother starts talking about this publicly, especially in front of family. Then you pipe in, yes, and was it worth it? Because your punishment over this accidental loss of a material item was borderline abusive. As a result, I have lost all admiration for you as my mother. And the fact you use this still as a weapon to embarrass me is proof of your intentions to me as your child. Ugh, I am bitter for you about this OP. I hope you find closure. Hope she doesn't have to depend on you for a place to live in her golden years. This reminds me. When I was about eight or so, I stood on a chair arm to take down something too high for me to reach. One of the arms broke. My dad said that my allowance was gone until it was paid for. Two years pass and I asked him if I could get an allowance again. He had no idea what I was talking about and I had to remind him, of course this was the same father who would give me and my brother a $5 bill each week to cover our bus to and from school and any lunch we wanted a whole $2. And then would show up within the next hour and so and tell us that he needed cash and would give us a check which necessitated us walking half a mile to the grocery store on a Sunday to cash because, surprise, surprise, the bus driver wouldn't take a check. Sigh. Your mom definitely failed you and so did every adult in your world. When your mom went on her rants, someone with some sense should have corrected her.
They did not and you suffered. My mother's toxic behavior is unbearable after my father's death. My dad died almost a month ago. He was nice but emotionally unavailable. I am grieving him. So is my mother. I've come to live with her for some time. My mother has started her silent treatment again. I got up late so I get silent treatment. God it's ducking exhausting to live with her again. She does this all the time. She controlled what college I go to. Gives me the silent treatment when I'd go live with my boyfriend. No contact for months then suddenly call and ask when I am coming home to visit. I am ducking exhausted. It's time to leave her to grieve alone. Tell her that you see you are getting on her nerves, and so you think it's more considerate to just leave. If you just withdraw happily each time she gives you the silent treatment, she might notice it doesn't work, and if she doesn't, getting away from the toxicity is good for you. The silent treatment is manipulative and designed so you'll beg for her to talk to you. The best way to combat it is to pretend not to notice. Go about your day like everything is fine. If she says anything just give her you weren't speaking to me? I hadn't noticed. Eventually she'll give it up when she doesn't get the desired response from you. Man it's so hard to remember this sort of stuff in the moment. That's what my AI, someday, could help with alerting me when I should be taking better choices of how I deal with people. Definitely time to move out again. Her silent treatment behavior is not healthy and verges on a form of controlling abuse. Opie unless your mother is disabled in some manner that she can't care for herself please make your plans and move out. If she is disabled in some manner check with the appropriate government agencies, elder care, care for disabled persons, etc., for any options that don't include you living with her. If your mother is sufficiently over her grief to fall back into her old habits that are damaging to your mental health then IMO she is well enough to deal with life on her own. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.